hero. He doesn't stand for below me. Sounds like a lot of supernatural baloney to me. Supernatural. Perhaps. Baloney. Perhaps not. This is the Paranormal Podcast with Jim Harrell. Welcome to the program today, and we have an old friend who keeps going from strength to strength. You know him from the Paranormal 60. He's been uh, featured on shows like Ghost Adventurers, The Holzer Files. Uh, He's just prolific. He's everywhere, and he's at it again. And we're talking about Dave Schrader, and he has a new series starting out. The Ghosts of Devil's Perch. It's premiering Sunday, August 21st on Travel Channel and Discovery Plus. And we're so glad to have him on the show and to talk to him about this new series. It sounds exciting. Dave, welcome to the show today. Jim, it's always a pleasure to be here with you. Thank you you for having me on. So, I I mean, you've done a number of different shows over the years. Uh, Mm -hmm. What gets your juices flowing? What gets you excited about this new show the the ghosts of devil's perch you know i was really lucky with the last series the holzer files to get to walk in the the footsteps of the legend hans holzer and get to re-examine and re-investigate his case files uh and he had thousands of these case files where he looked in all aspects of the paranormal the ghosts of devil's perch takes uh takes me into kind of a new uncharted territory for myself uh you know this is the fourth in the series there was series of one and two were ghosts of shepherdstown series mm-hmm. two was ghosts of morgan city um or series three technically but uh series four they put cindy Kaza and i from the holzer files back together um jp gallagher the mayor uh of butte montana along with um sheriff lester we're dealing with some supernatural occurrences. And, you know, as Sheriff Lester says, if it's a bad guy, I can slap cuffs on him and take him in. How do you deal with the paranormal? And there was such a strange uptick that uh, they they were looking for help. They were hoping that somebody could come in and give them the aid that they were unable to to give to the community. And that's what our team set out to do. Now, how in the world did they find you guys? I mean, I love the idea that they said, we need to find some ghost investigators and get this thing figured out. How did they find you guys? Because, well, in the olden days, and you'll remember these days, you look in yellow pages and it might be hard to find. (laughs) How did they uh, find you guys and and how did you get connected? Well, Cindy and I were standing under an overpass with a cardboard sign that says, (laughs) we'll ghost hunt for food. Um, well, Cindy and I had come from the Holzer Files, and uh, when, you know, the other two, uh, Shepherdstown and Morgan City, were so popular and, and other mayors and, and police chiefs from around the United States had, had been looking for help, um, the network jumped to it and put together the team. Ben Hansen was off working on some other things. Mm-hmm. Sarah Lemos was off working on other things. So Cindy and I jumped in, and Katie Stafford, who's kind of the mad scientist of the paranormal he he builds equipment uh like on spot you can he's like the macgyver jim you know i he, we, god if, if we could just test this theory and i turn around he's got a coffee can and and three nuts and and some coil going over to the car battery and all of a sudden we're talking to the other side uh it sounds like an over exaggeration but he was that good he'd just start building things on set um with these theories in mind to see if we could test them and find a way to communicate with the spiritual realm uh so kd had been on ghost of morgan city uh they brought him over into this so he's kind of the the link between morgan city and uh you know devil's perch and then cindy and i coming from the holzer files they just knew that they'd they'd have kind of already a ready-made team somebody that uh you know the the viewers of the last series would recognize and somebody that people recognize from the holzer files now uh one thing that appeals to me about it uh, i was looking over the materials and things 
is there's a definite historical piece to it. And I love the history of these haunted places and spaces. So from your perspective, can you talk a little bit about the history of this place? Because I got to believe, I think we're kind of kindred spirits with that in, in the sense right. that we both appreciate history and are interested in history. Can you talk about uh, the uh, history a little bit of Devil's Perch? Yeah, I think you have to be careful using the term kindred spirits, Jim. That's I, trademarked. I, uh, uh, so. You know, when I said that, I'm like, uh, maybe that wasn't the best choice of words. That, but That's Amy and Adam, and they're doing a great job on their own. Yeah, part of what draws me to these type of stories is the history. This wasn't just another uh, series of ghost hunting. I was going to get to go to a, one of the most historic cities in the United States, the copper capital of the world at one point. This place was bigger than like Las Vegas and Los Angeles and Texas with people that live there, you know, this boom town and to take it from that to where we are now and realize this area is steeped in history and, and it's truly made on the backs of workers, blood, sweat, and tears and get to walk in those footsteps and, and follow those pathways and streets where the supernatural and the natural collide. And they're doing a lot of revitalization in the town of Butte. They're really updating it and making it accessible to new families and businesses and things moving there that that really um, was kind of a, a perfect storm for the paranormal to reignite. And you know that we've heard that enough times sure. that when we start restoring or messing with an area it can right. stir up the, the spiritual realm. Well, I think there's a lot of these spirits that felt like, you know, you know about the copper barons, you know about these famous people that came through here, but don't forget about us. Don't forget about those who built this town, whose hard work, you know, went into this, the people that died in the mines, the people that died on the streets trying to protect the city and protect each other. And, and it's, it's a really powerful story of just showing what America truly was about. You know, it was a land of opportunity. It was a land of, of um, you know, new wide open spaces and experiences. And, and we were just getting it right. You know, I mean, they were just trying to figure this whole thing out. And that's where we step in now all these years later, getting to reexamine these stories and these histories and pulling from the history books these names that have long been forgotten and trying to give them a voice so that their spiritual connection to now is heard again and they have great stories i mean like i said you know history as you know is always filled with the the winner's story right and you never hear about you know the guy who who really found this or set this in motion and now we get to go back and hear from those spirits as they were crying out they wanted they demanded to be heard and recognized now, uh, I know uh, my grandfather was a coal miner. So uh, mm -hmm. I used to, as a child, go to the coal town where he used to mine and you could just walk through it and it was largely abandoned, but you felt like you could feel the presence of mm -hmm. these people who lived there. Did, was that your experience in Butte? Did you, did you feel those people from all those years ago? Oh, yeah, without a doubt. Jim, when you're going and you're walking down these streets and you're walking through these buildings that have stood for 100, 150 years and and you hear the stories and that there are descendants of those people still living in this town, you're not far removed. It's not like we're, you know, investigating someplace that was off the map for, and grid forever and there's no survivors from that. There are, you know, we're three, four, five, six generations removed from that, but those people are still in town and we had to do them right as well. We wanted to give them back their history, give their families and friends the right platform to, to tell their story. And that's, that's what we did. But yeah, there was no doubt you could walk into some of these locations and you just knew you weren't alone and it was everywhere. Now, is there some thought, and maybe this is something that was discussed on the show, maybe it's something that wasn't, was there some thought that perhaps the fact that you had an area very rich in minerals, that it was a place that maybe held on to these spirits, held on to paranormal activity because of the mineral richness of the area? Was there any thought given to that or am I just kind of oh, yeah. as usual no, you're, out you're there right. in space somewhere? We examine many different aspects of that and in, in uncovering that and what people are 
you know, might not be familiar with this is the stone tape theory, oh, yeah. uh, the piezoelectric theory, all of these concepts that the stone holds memory, that it records like a, a template, these the experiences that have happened there before. And uh, yeah, you've got these rich deposits all over the place. You've got underground water currents, and then you've got these copper veins that stretch out throughout the entire area and encompass it. So basically, Jim, it was like a, it was a, a prehistoric internet. You know, there was still this connectivity, these stories. And if we are to believe that spirits can truly manipulate electromagnetic fields, copper is one of the best ways to zip around and make these connections. You know, that's why phone lines were made of them and, and the telegraph, because it could take these electric pulses and turn them into a message. And I think the spirits figured that out. You'll see as the, the series progresses, uh, Ghosts of Devil's Perch, it's an eight episode series, begins airing on Travel Channel and Discovery Plus simultaneously on August 21st, runs through the middle of Ghosttober. Um, so it's really a, a great opportunity for people to come along on this journey with us and see the interesting way that these spirits make themselves known to us. You know, I wonder when you go to these towns, obviously you had the town fathers and leadership that sound like they were on board and wanted to do this. Do you ever run into people who are a little skeptical and say, well, I don't know about this. And then maybe who, as time goes on and they see things develop, kind of maybe change their way of thinking, Does whether in this, this series or another one, does that sort of thing uh, occur at all? Yeah, certainly. You know, I mean, we had the, when we did the Holzer files, we were going back and reinvestigating a lot of Hans Holzer's famous cases, mm -hmm. but there were some of the cases we approached in first season who were like, mm, no, thanks. <laughs> and then when they saw that we went into it with, with the approach of Hans Holzer, it wasn't sensationalized. It wasn't overly dramatic. It was, we were, we were revealing what the truth was to be told. Um, suddenly they started opening their doors up in second season. They're like, listen, we watched season one and we really like the way you people handle yourselves and handle the location. So we've reconsidered it. We'll let you in, uh, one of the, the season two episodes. And, uh, it is out of my head right now. I can't remember the name, but it was, a, a former plantation area and mm -hmm. Hans Holzer had heard about these ghost stories and just showed up knocking on their door one day mm -hmm. and was turned away. They were like, nope, we don't need you. Don't want you. Just go away. They were okay with the spirits that were there, but the, the family, now the grandchildren that own this property, they were okay with us coming in there and talking because they love the history so much that they, they knew telling the ghost story was a great way to shoehorn in history and teach people in an entertaining, educating and enlightening way. And then the spirits had their own stories to tell. So there was this kind of reticence at first in some of these kind of areas to share their stories. And I worked behind the scenes for five years on ghost adventures as a location scout. And it would be funny. I would hit up locations that would say, nope, we don't want anything to do with you guys. We don't want anything to do with the paranormal, blah, blah. And that's because they had been burned in the past right. by independent groups. And then they saw that we handled the history right. We told the story right. So I would... I would tell them, do me a favor. And I would point out two or three episodes from the season before. Just go watch these as an example. I think you're, you've got a misrepresentation or a misunderstanding of what to expect. And then they went back and, and a lot of them were like, oh, okay, yeah. Yeah, we'll let that come in. You know, we, we'd like to be a part of that and we'd like to share that history. And then you've got other locations, you know, that changed their mind vast of the Stanley Hotel. They built their reputation on the paranormal and then they kind of step away and we're like, we're above the paranormal. We're a boutique hotel now. <laughs> and then they go back to the paranormal and then they pull back again. And so there's some of these places that don't know how to fix their identity and they're afraid that the paranormal is going to taint them. And I said, no, no. Why are you so in love with this property? Why are you here? And they tell me, well, we love the history. And I go, right. And you know what bores the hell out of people is history. But if we can tell that history in an entertaining way, right. tie it to these historical figures and give people a different insight into them, people are going to learn about it. And you're going to, you know, it's like the, the field of dreams, build it and they will come. Let us share it and they will come. And they did. It didn't affect the Queen Mary. 
It didn't affect the Stanley Hotel. They were booked constantly because of these paranormal shows because it did tell those stories and it did bring you in and, and it made you feel like this is home and you could go there at any time and become a part of that history. I believe that the problem with history is the way that it's taught because history is fascinating. I, I hear people say, oh, I love the paranormal. I don't care for this history stuff. And it's like, wait a minute. That's uh, like peanut butter without jelly. It's uh, like water right. without a glass. I mean, it's part and parcel. It's the it's one and the same. It's just people are just taught this like dry, boring version of history. But I think if they were brought into it, as you said, in an entertaining way, and yes, kind of like you know the 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 paranormal's kind of the dessert to kind of eat your dinner. But I I I think it's a great thing to be able to make history come alive for people, and I think that right. pursuit of the paranormal does that now and when, and when you get a chance to hear the ghost right uh, we can go to the conference house where ben franklin stood there for two hours negotiating with the king of england's people and talking to him about what we would and would not do in our settling of this new country and then rebuking them when they tried to buy him off you know that's an interesting piece of history but a eh, big deal but when you go in there and now the fact is we may hear from Ben Franklin, or we may hear from one of these spirits themselves sharing a, an interesting piece. And we did, man, it, you know, in that story, it came alive and we found out a whole different part of the history that had been pushed aside. This place was so rich and, and, and interesting, but it was only two hours, two to three hours of their entire 200 year existence was built on this and all the rest of the stories were there and forgotten about because there was, you know, you would put the Grammy or the uh, Oscar on top of the pile of, of all the other things that came before it. And that's all they saw. And these other spirits and stories came forward. And that's what we're doing now with the ghosts of devil's perch is we're, we're going in and we're plumbing the depths of these hist historical places and, and stories and people and realizing that they're, they were more than just workers and prostitutes and miners and, and, and this, that, and the other, but that they had hopes, dreams, and desires. They wanted more. They needed to get more. And when you can tell these stories and now you tune in and it's not just Dave Schrader and Cindy Kaza and KD Stafford telling you these stories, but I'm standing there with my recorder and I get the voice and it tells me I did this and now I'll do this again. Wow. You heard from history. History spoke to us. And that's a fascinating way to tell and teach people. And, and we don't come off. None of these series come off preachy or teachy, you know, where you feel like, oh, I'm going to be sitting in on a history lesson. Right. It's just part of the journey. You can't get to the truth without knowing what came before it. And, and I've, been extremely pleased with the shows I've worked on that they take the history seriously. And we've got the town historian, Chris Fisk, one of the local high school teachers, one of the, the town tour guides. You can find him on the weekends, uh, you know, as he's out touring and, and talking about the spirits <laughs> and spooks of, of Butte because he knew the importance of sharing this history and finding an entertaining way to do it and going out there. This was amazing. He helped breathe life into these characters for us so that when we went there, we knew who we were talking to. We knew who and what the backstory was, or at least what history had told us. And some of these spirits came out screaming to let us know they got it wrong. This is where you need to look. And there were times we would surprise the historian because we would come up with a piece of evidence Cindy picked up on psychically, or I would get through EVP or KD would get through a piece of equipment and we would take that to the historian and he'd be like, I've, I'm not familiar with that guys. I'm, I've been here my whole life. And sure enough, he'd go in with his, his, uh, uh, gosh, I wish I could remember the name of the group. He has this great little group of historians that he works with. Uh, it's not the brat pack, but it's something along that. <laughs> uh, and they, they go in and they, they would dig and all of a sudden they'd be like, holy cow, you're not going to believe this. You gave us this name. You gave us this concept. We can't find it. We looked in and there's one mention of it. And then we started tracing back and here's the story. Wow. And it comes alive and it's like a That's Broadway neat. play, right? We give them the first few notes and the rest, the song plays out. It's, it's awesome. Oh, that's very neat. In in this particular series, how do you see your role? Um, are you like the the straw that stirs the drink? I think they used to say that years ago about Reggie Jackson, 
for the Yankees. Uh, Whatever it is, what, what do you see your role as? You know, that's uh, that's interesting. Um, I am the lead investigator. I guess that's the title that I'm, I'm given mm-hmm. in this. Um, you know, everybody has Cindy is the voice of the spirit realm. She gets to tap into that. KD is kind of the voice of today and yesterday. He can take the technology of today and bridge it with the past and give voice to the spirits so that we can hear what Cindy's hearing. And I guess I'm kind of there almost like your narrator, like um, your favorite uncle who tells stories at all the parties that you've ever been to. And I get to hold your hand and walk you through the story and share all of the great characters that are involved in this. And then during the investigation, hopefully kind of as a, an anchor uh, and a rock to build this this investigation on with the history and information I bring to it, the, the uh, pragmatic way I try to investigate and then finding a way to utilize Cindy and and KD and marry it all as one kind of nice, perfectly moving unit. So, you know, I it, it, I don't know what the title is. You know, in, in in the old series, I was kind of the new age Dr. Holzer, right? I was the, the mm-hmm. lead investigator doing this and Cindy was the Sybil Leak, the Ethel Meyer, the voice of the spirits, and and Shane was the definitely the audience. He was an itchy, twitchy, nervous guy who, you know, when you put him in these places, you, the audience, could totally relate with, why is Dave such a jerk? Why did he send him to the attic <laughs> or the basement by himself? Um, you you know, that was the relationship, and Alexandra Holzer was the voice of her father. Gabe was there for this, but when you come into this, we've got so many great working parts uh, that it's hard. There, there's no one... In, integral part because you've got to have the history from Chris Fisk. You've got to have the the voice of the spirits coming from Cindy Kaza. You've got to have the technology working in perfect concert with what Cindy and Chris Chris Fisk have given us. And then, like I said, I'm trying to try, hopefully bridging the gap between the audience and that to let you into my world, let you see what's going on and how this all comes together. I got to believe one of the cool parts of a show like this and this show in particular is talking with the townspeople and the mm-hmm. experiencers looking in the eye, hearing the tenor of their voice. I remember when I was a kid, one of my favorite things to do, my, my family was from the country, from a rural area and going down, sitting on the porch and just hearing stories. And actually some of those ended up being spooky stories. I think that's how the whole campfire thing mm-hmm. got going. But right. but the, the point is, I got to believe that's one of the, for lack of a better word, funnest things about doing this is just talking to regular salt of the earth people and just Mm -hmm. hearing their stories as told by them directly to you. And when you're sitting there in front of a family that's having an extraordinary experience and part of it is electric and exciting and part of it is terrifying. And then they look at you and they go, I don't want to leave this home. I don't know what to do next. That that gives you the permission to go get the answers for them and help them so that they can continue to live in the place that they love. And they're characters, man. They're great characters. What a, an amazing, loving bunch of people we met when we filmed in Butte. There was so much camaraderie and, and love and everybody knew everybody in town and we'd go into a location and we'd be investigating it and talking to the owner and he'd say is this happening anywhere else we're like well we just came from the fink house (gasps) the finks are dealing with this i know them they go to my church or that you know we have dinner every thursday i wonder why they're not talking to me about this and you realize everybody's kind of got this and and i hope this brought the community together because Now people realize it's taking place and they're not alone. They're not nutballs for having this. It's something that is affecting many different people in different ways. So hopefully this opened up that opportunity for them to have a dialogue and even get closer because, you know, what they might have thought made them different and and might be an outsider from the rest now builds them together in in a shared kind of existence that we're both dealing with this. And It was great, but, uh, you know, we certainly had some characters. Um, I know, I I believe in the first episode, I went to one of the bars there to meet with Frankie, uh, Frankie Angel, who was an experiencer and had a very profound experience uh, at one of the locations. And uh, she plays piano in this bar, and it's kind of just what you would picture these old 
town bars would look like and the people there. And, you know, while we're filming, you can see some of them kind of looking at me with that quizzical look on their face, like, who is this guy? What's he doing in our town? But as it, the story goes on and they're listening, you know, they would come over to me afterwards and they'd be like, if you think that's crazy, you got to come to my house. Right. And we, we <laughs> kind of spun off in these other stories. So it was great. And and I, I love the people that we met in Butte and I hope that they, uh, uh accept this series with open arms and open hearts and God willing, if people watch it and like the show and you know, if Butte needs us, we're, I'm more than happy to get back on the horse and ride back into town again. Uh, I can't speak for my, my partners cause you know, life goes on and we've got stuff doing, but I think that they were as fascinated by the history and story and the charm of the people there that they would love to join in as well. So I know the show is coming up August 21st on Travel Channel, and it is yep. going to be on Discovery Plus, and that's going to be into October or Ghost-tober. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So I know you don't want to give too much weight, but you are a master sure. storyteller. Can you tell us mm -hmm. one story? Well, just one little story, Dave. Just a little Here, I'll tell you what. There, I, I, can, I can't tell you anything that will appear in the series, um, but one of my favorite moments uh, that, that started tragically, there is a, 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 an experience that, um, there's an experience that sees me go to the hospital, puts me in the hospital gym. Well, and yeah, I won't, I won't say what it is because it's, uh, it, was a, it was a wake up moment for me um, with the paranormal. Let me put that very clearly it was a wake up moment with the paranormal and i went to the hospital and and you know it was late at night as we were filming late and and nurses and doctors came in to check in on me and then they started well what are you where were you what what happened to you and you know i don't want to tell them oh i think i think a ghost hurt me <laughs> or or Ooh. you know i might have been pushed by I'd, you don't want to say something paranormal because I don't know what happened. I wanted the doctors to tell me. I trust me more than anything. I wanted them to go, Oh, your appendix ruptured. We're going to put you in surgery. Um, I wanted answers from them. They wanted answers. Where were you? What were you? Do? Are you filming a TV show in our town? <laughs> and I started talking to the doctors and nurses at this fully functioning hospital. There is a very well known hospital in town that is, uh, defunct. It's just a sh of the building and it is well known to be very haunted, but, um, here I am in the regular hospital and nurses and doctors keep coming in one by one going, I got to tell you what happened to me here. There's a little girl that haunts the third floor. Huh. We've all seen her. She'll be sitting on the, she's usually sitting on one of the sinks, looking in the mirror. Or she'll play with the water and turn the water on. And you'll see her there one second, the water goes on and then she's gone and the water still going. Um, you know, there's stories like that, that, that grab your attention and you start realizing that, you know, and, oh, we saw this happen and I've seen that happen. And there's this uh, woman that is seen going into rooms. And we've started to realize when we see her go into rooms, most likely whoever's in that room is soon to pass. Hmm. And you, you just, you start to realize there's no place that isn't haunted in this town in one way, shape or another. And, you know, that that's profound. That tells you something that that's different than any location I've been in because with a merchant's house museum in New York is a haunted building, but next door doesn't talk about it. And across the street doesn't talk right. about it. And the shawarma guy isn't talking about it. They, they don't have any problems, but you go into Butte and everybody has a story. Everybody has an experience. Oh yeah. I woke up one day and standing over my bed were these two nuns and they were looking at me with this quizzical look. And then they looked at each other and then just kind of dissipated oh and God. i'm like well what were nuns doing there and they're like I, I you know what i found out that this part of the property i own used to be on the property where the hospital was it was those kind of stories so makes you wonder if you know a hundred years ago did these two nuns come walking into a room and there's this strange bed and somebody sleeping in it and they're standing over it going what is this and then the person wakes up sees them and all of a sudden they dissipate in that room. I would love to go back and find old diaries from that time and era of what did the people that lived here, worked here, see for themselves? Because I think a lot of the hauntings are time slip phenomena. I think sometimes the things they were seeing a hundred years ago might be us now looking through the veil and, and we're having that brief moment. That's why the ghost looks surprised 
as much as we are because they're in 1912 or 1887 seeing Dave Schrader with his iPod on, you know, his, his ear pods on. Yeah. And, and uh, in the world is that <laughs> a backpack and a, a K2 meter. And they're like, what? what right? Is this I mean, some kind of alien? Yeah, exactly. exactly. So I, I think that, uh, you know, there's that aspect of it. And we, we start talking about um, soul fractures and how pieces of us are kind of left behind. And that really starts to make itself known in the story. So uh, Butte was great because it wasn't, one type of haunting there wasn't just an atypical grandma's haunting in the house you know we were running into history we were walking into soul fractures we were walking into time slip phenomena it was it was a little bit of everything it was the you know old country buffet of paranormal activity <laughs> so well it sounds like a great place to have an invitation and i know that you mm -hmm. want to invite everybody to watch ghosts of devil's perch so tell everybody when and where they can do such a thing well they can tune in starting august 21st on travel channel and discovery plus they're dropping it simultaneously on both formats so the, those of you with travel channel can tune in and check it out those of you with discovery plus can check it out and uh stick with us w watch this ride i can promise you're going to enjoy it and then as the season progresses i'm going to be doing some independent uh, step away i do my podcast you know uh, the paranormal 60 with dave schrader on mondays and fridays but i'm going to be doing a bonus episode um, as the series progresses, where we'll take a look at each episode and we'll talk about what took place and what it meant to us and to the people that we, in you know, were involved with. So that's going to be a little bit of a deeper dive behind the scenes. So, you know, if people are interested in getting even more info, they can check out uh, the Paranormal 60 with Dave Schrader on YouTube and, and the audio version anywhere you can get the, the podcast and, and find out more in-depth stories. Excellent. Ghosts of Devil's Perch. You've done it again, Dave. Congratulations and wish you all the best with the show. And as always, it's a lot of fun to chat with you. Always great catching up with you, Jim. And again, I just want people to know that you've been kicking at this now, what going on 17, 18 years, and you keep doing the best of the work out there in this paranormal genre, talking about this and making it normal for people to feel comfortable opening up about their experiences. And I personally want to thank you as a fan of the paranormal and as a contemporary in the field that you were one of the, the first pioneers out there doing this podcast format. And without you, a lot of the shows that exist now would not be there. Well, the same for you, Dave. The same for you. You certainly are a podcast pioneer as well. And always good to chat with you and continued success. And thank you for the kind words. Thank you, Jim. Take care. Thanks so much for tuning in to the Paranormal Podcast. And always great to catch up with Dave and his latest adventures. And we wish him all the best with the new show. And make sure that you check it out. And make sure that you rate, review, subscribe, and follow to this show. Let folks know how much you love it. Make sure that you are following in the app of your choice so you never miss an episode. And we'll talk to you next time. Have a great week, everybody. And as always, stay safe and stay spooky. Bye-bye. <laughs>